in this part of the session on hydroxychloroquine, after the you know, ominous side effects that we talked about, we see the break in the dark clouds can appear with the ray of hope peaking into raising some bigger hopes for the world of diabetes. From this point of view, this drug actually could have been chosen by President Trump as a Trump card to help the population uh, with uh, diabetes in the US. He could have actually placed six more million orders for the prevalent 35 million people with diabetes instead of the 29 million. Hydroxychloroquine, with its dual property of reducing blood sugar and as an anti-inflammatory drug, is a fantastic drug in the arsenal of uh, diabetes management. After binding with the insulin receptor, insulin and insulin receptor complex undergoes internalization in the endocytic vesicles. Later, acidification of these vesicles causes dissociation of insulin from the insulin receptor. Subsequently, insulin receptor is returned to the plasma membrane, which can readily be now available to bind to other new insulin. The insulin is now either degraded in the endosomes or transported out of the vesicle by a membrane protein transporter. Being an acidotropic agent, hydroxychloroquine reaches high concentrations intracellularly and raises the intracellular pH, which causes inactivation of the various proteolytic enzymes responsible for the degradation of insulin. This results in recirculation of substantial proportion of insulin in the active form. In the process of degradation of the insulin, the rate-limiting step is dissociation of insulin from the insulin receptor. Hydroxychloroquine delays this dissociation and consecutively extend the action of insulin by increasing its half-life, which may be responsible for its anti-diabetic effect. Mira Lahage, in the Therapeutic Advances of Endocrinology Metabolism in 2014, described the case of a young woman with type 1 diabetes whose glycemic control was optimized with the introduction of hydroxychloroquine at a dose of 200 mg once daily as a treatment for her Sjogren syndrome, along with a subtle but very measurable improvement in uh, her lipid profile. Hydroxychloroquine is an immunomodulatory drug and with an inhibitory and an immunomodulatory effect on T cells and the interleukin 1 and 6. And we all know that type 1 is an autoimmune disease. So the possible reduction in islet cell autoimmunity by hydroxychloroquine is the underlying mechanism for this improvement in glycemic control in type 1 patients. Hydroxychloroquine has also been uh, effective uh, in uh, reducing the cholesterol synthesis it upregulates the LDL receptors, enhancing the plasma removal of this lipoprotein and resulting in lowering of insulin levels. There has been almost more than 50% reduction in triglyceride total cholesterol apolipoprotein C3 levels seen in hydroxychloroquine users in women with mild or inactive uh, systemic lupus erythematosus compared with non users. There has also been overall increase in 15% of HDL cholesterol in hydroxychloroquine users in populations of patients with rheumatoid arthritis after 12 months of therapy. Given the elevated cardiovascular risk associated with diabetes, as we call diabetes is a cardiovascular disease, the addition of hydroxychloroquine to patients' usual treatment could therefore counteract the diabetic dyslipidemic effect, resulting in potential minimization of an atheroma progression and thus possibly lowering uh, the mortality due to uh, cardiovascular diseases.